Good afternoon, my name is Jay Sean Kent. I'm here to talk today about Malcolm X and Martin Luther King Jr. and their place in civil rights. So Martin Luther King and Malcolm X have very the same beliefs and reasons to fight, but they differ on a few matters, subjects such as how they want to get their point across and how they want to fight for civil rights for people of color. So both Malcolm X and Martin Luther King believe in equality and freedom of basic human rights and towards religion. Martin Luther King was a Baptist and Malcolm X was a Baptist turned to the nation of Islam when he was in jail in his early years. So both their metaphysical beliefs were that everyone's born equal, no matter race, gender, size, all that stuff, we're all equal. We deserve the basic rights to have equal property, equal treatment, and equal everything. So early in Malcolm X's life, his father, whose name was Reverend Earl Little, was a Baptist member and formerly supported the black national leader, Marcus Garvey. He died being hit by a streetcar. It was, they believed it was possibly a murder by whites, but it was never proven. So Malcolm X was mainly raised by women in his upbringing. Two of the women, two of the main women who spoke out in his lifetime were Ollie, Queen Mother Moore, and Vicky Garvin, who was Marcus Garvin's wife. They were um, really like big in him, big in his, on his impact towards, towards religion. And they helped refine his ideas on various issues. He even spoke out saying that black women were the most disrespected person in America. So a little about Marcus Garvey. Marcus Garvey was one of the first uh, founders of the Black Nationalist Movement. And he also had the style Universal Negro Improvement, Conservation Association, America, and Community League. So basically, he was a very big outspoken person towards civil rights. He was mainly self-taught. He was considered as the rising black Moses during the time period. He helped a lot of black people you know, stand out, fought for rights, and he helped a lot of them get well, better educated, should I say. Now, Malcolm X, he never strayed away from violence, but he never like outright stated he wanted violence. He stated if he would have taken force for force, he was taking violence for violence and force to the white man to compromise their stand and give freedom to, ju to justice of blacks. Basically, he wasn't going after just swinging punches, but if they wanted to fight, he'd be ready to fight right back. And then he also denounced nonviolence as a philosophy of a fool, which coincidentally, Martin Luther King Jr. was a nonviolent person. He believed that nonviolence was the way to go. He got that from his, from his men, well, he believed in the Gandhi philosophy, which states that only morally and, and practically sound method to oppress people for the struggle of freedom basically means that you can't be morally out there making people you can't call yourself morally right while fighting someone saying that you should be all equal. If you're all equal, you should be able to like talk it out and make things work that way. That was a big thing for us, Martin Luther King. Now the leadership styles were extremely similar. They're both transformational leadership styles. They're both courageous and advocacy. They're always standing right there on the front lines when they went out for anything. They had excellent communication skills and always would visually look at you. They always took criticism and brushed everything off. They went straight through it and broke everything down. They had charismatic, they had a very charismatic and outgoing way of speaking and emphasis on self-reliance on both of them.